Hey guys, this is Post Production Pie with srange.com, and in this Lightroom edit, we're basically going to do a follow up to our previous one where we did the basic color correction for this image. So let's go through now and we're going to do another kind of advanced Lightroom retouch and let's get started. We're going to start with our skin first of all because that is the area probably that needs the most adjustments right now because we did a lot of sharpening in that previous one. So in the previous episode, we basically took our image from the before to this color corrected snapshot that we did before, uh, afterwards. So if you guys haven't done that, go sh be sure to go through that. Right now we're going to get started. I am going to hit uh, K to bring up my adjustment brush. Whoops, I accidentally hit lights off. I can't see right now because all my lights are turned off in my room. So let's hit K um, and let's go to clarity. We're going to bring clarity all the way down to negative 100. We're going to bring sharpness down to negative 50. Again, the only reason why I'm doing it so much is because I want to see where this effect is being painted on. I'm going to turn on my masking overlay as well by hitting O. And we're going to start just adjusting and, and pulling the skin, uh, the detail out of the skin basically. So we're going to do it all the way over the skin. And then we'll clean it up in one second to reduce it from the, or remove it from the areas that we don't want covered. So let's remove it from everywhere. And this is going to take just a minute, so be sure to uh, be following along on this as well. And then we're going to go up to his face. We're going to remove it from his face as well. And cover all the skin. With guys, you don't need to remove as much. I mean, most guys don't want to look like they have porcelain skin. Uh, it just looks a little bit too soft and unmasculine. So be sure to leave more detail on the guy's skin than you would on the girl's. Uh, now let's go through. We're going to hold Alt. We're going to zoom in. Hold Alt as we're we're making these modifications. Once again, I'm just using my mouse. Don't like using my Wacom tablet. All right. We're just going to pull it out of the shadow or out of the hair, so we can just kind of uh, make sure that we're enhancing our hair detail. We don't want to kill our all of our uh, nice detail in the hair. Let's see. All right, if you guys accidentally get, you know, if you guys actually un uncover the skin a little bit, just uh, let go of the Alt button and paint it back in. And that's fine. Once again, we're just going to keep going. You'll see how this, uh, you know, with depending on the subject, this can take a lot more or a lot less time. If you have hair that's kind of covering different areas of the body, like the shoulders and stuff like that, you got to be a lot more detailed in this process. I'm going to remove it from his shirt. I don't want to reduce detail over his shirt area. Make sure this side's clean. Looks like that side's good. Okay, let's cover the shoulder area. Let's get it off the hair on the shoulders. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm noticing a little bit too much pink in the skin. We might need to change the color temperature. And then I realized it was my mask. I'm glad I'm not that colorblind. I am actually partially colorblind. It's pretty crazy. I know I'm a professional photographer and uh, post-production master, and I am partially colorblind. But you know what? Post-production, like uh, a lot of photography, is really all about relationships. And a lot of people wonder why you know I'm I'm not looking at like the histogram and stuff like that when I'm doing my editing. I'm not looking at any of that stuff because I'm looking more uh, along the relationships between the you know the the brightness, the 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 highlights and the shadows. I can see, I don't necessarily need to have my monitor perfectly adjusted to be able to see that I am losing detail in my highlights or that I'm losing detail in my shadows. So I'm looking really more overall at the just kind of relationship between the colors versus like individual, you know, statistics and stuff like that on, on like a, a histogram or something. So it's really helpful to make these adjustments very, very quickly. All right, we're good on her skin right now. I'm going to go and cover his skin. We're going to remove it from the hair. And then uh, we're going to just clean up kind of the back area of this. Just get it off his shirt a little bit. And just remove it from the neckline. Just cleaning up all the edges. Okay, we got our edges pretty good. I'm going to just add a little back in the nose there. Uh, now I'm going to remove it from the areas that we don't want it. So I'm going to remove it from the lips. Okay, and then I'm going to just add it back over his, just the upper lip area. Remove from this hair right here. We're good on this side, I think. Let's go down to her eyes. His eyes aren't in the picture, I don't believe. Yeah, his eyes aren't in the picture, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's remove it from her eyebrows on each side 
And hopefully with this retouch series, you guys are gonna be quickly able to see what areas that you can make quick retouches in Lightroom, what areas are, are gonna need to be brought into Photoshop. You know, with, with stuff like this little strand of hair that's on her forehead right here that needs to be retouched out, that's gonna be near impossible to do in Lightroom. And it's gonna, if you, I mean, it would be possible to do in Lightroom, but I don't know why you'd want to. If you have Photoshop, you'll save <laughs> 20 minutes of time just by taking the Photoshop and using your, your clone tool to clone that out, which is something that I'm kind of annoyed about with Lightroom 4 because uh, so far in the beta, there's not really advancements made to the clone tools and, and different brushes, like the local area adjustments. All right, we're gonna take it out of our lips. Want to keep all the detail in the lips and in the eyes. That looks about right right there. We can clean it up in a second if we need to. All right, let's zoom out. I'm going to hit O to remove my mask overlay. And now we're going to just zoom back in and just kind of look at the face. And we're going to see where that clarity and where the sharpness needs to be at. Once again, I want to reduce and diminish this the overall kind of skin pores and stuff, but I don't want to remove it. If I remove it, skin's gonna look like porcelain and it's not gonna look realistic. So we're gonna do just kind of uh, adjustments here to reduce it but not remove it. You can see if we take sharpness too far down, I mean, it just starts looking blurry. But if we go down more around this area, then it's just starting to look kind of plasticky. So be sure to keep the realism in the, in the photo. Uh, let's see, let's go to about there. And let's zoom out and check it out from there. And you want to make sure that, you know, different people are going to really want a different level of enhancement done to, you know, their images and stuff like that. Some people want a little bit more, some people want a little bit less. So be kind of sensitive to what each client wants and what they are kind of expecting. I'm going to reduce the, uh, or increase my clarity just a little bit more and just increase the sharpness just a tiny bit more. It's looking a little bit on the plasticky side. Okay. So I think right there is about good for that general adjustment. Let's go through and we're going to do our, our, basically our cloning and healing of any spots on the skin, just these little imperfections we're gonna pull out. And guys, these models, uh, these clients of ours, they're, they're beautiful just the way they are, but let's face it, anybody that's shot from this close, if I was shot from this close up, I would need a lot more retouch. This is something that's completely natural, and so, you know, expect that when you're doing close up portraits, there's gonna be some retouch involved, regardless of how flawless you might think skin is and make sure that if you're if you're putting these sh shots up or if you're blowing them up make sure that they are retouched there's nothing worse than buying an, an image of yourself for several hundred dollars and having that image have you know just kind of be glaring uh examples of any flaws in the skin and stuff like that so be sure to do these retouch items on on these glaring areas just going to pull this out she already has really nice skin though, just the way it is. It's funny when you see like uh, images like of models and stuff like that, if you see the before images or like the during the shoot images and stuff like that, you'll see those before images of, of these models that are re unretouched. And the unretouched ones, they look so incredibly different. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, they show like, you know, pimples and, and all this crazy stuff. You'd, you'd think that model skin is always flawless and half the models that we get the actual models for shoots and stuff that we do are just uh they have really bad skin and you spend a lot of time the retoucher at least will spend a lot of time doing the retouch so all right we're going to remove this little fleck on the nose right here again keep in mind that we're adjusting the brush with every single one of these clicks we want to make sure that um, these all look really natural and the key to making it look natural is keeping the adjustments small i'm going to zoom in these little pores that are larger on the nose i'm just kind of cloning those and, and healing those out as well there's a little bit of skin on the lips. She looks like she has a little bit of chapped lips. Let's pull that out. And we're going to bring that over another area of the lips so we kind of get that shadow back where it should be. Um, again, this is another one of those adjustments that's probably easier to make in, in Photoshop. But this is a Lightroom tutorial, so we're not going to go into Photoshop. Remove from right here. All right, now let's go to his skin. Now, remember what I said with, with guys, don't worry about removing every single thing. I mean, guys don't want to look like they have perfect skin. Most guys don't, at least. Um, it, it looks a little bit too feminine. when It looks like basically just like they wore makeup that day. So usually I remove the glaring stuff. You know, if I see things that aren't flattering, I'll remove those specks. But the rest of it, I just kind of leave. So this bigger stuff, I'm removing out. Um, and then the rest of it, I'm just going to leave the way it is. And I don't see anything else that's super glaring. The rest is just kind of 
his his look and everything, which looks absolutely fine. One thing I would do for this image in Photoshop, which we can't do yet in Lightroom, hopefully a future version of Lightroom will have an adjustment like this, is just a nice liquify tool. I would liquify that chin just a little bit. Um, one thing you do when you're shooting it is have the basically have the guy pull his chest in and lean forward just a tiny bit and it stretches out the neckline a little bit more. So right here I would just kind of uh, just kind of improve the, the neckline a little bit by liquefying a tiny bit. Alright, so I think we're good on the skin detail. I think there's one thing down here on her shoulder that needs to be this little, uh, I think this is some sort of, I, I forgot what test this is, but when we're all young we get this and I, I have one on my arm too. But uh, be sure when people are wearing short sleeves or when their arms are showing that you guys actually retouch those out. Because that definitely is not something that's flattering. And it's something that we all have. Anybody that knows or remembers what that test was, write it in the comments so I can remember. Okay. This looks great, guys. Right here is totally fine. I'm going to zoom in on the eyes and see if we want to do any brightening or anything like that. The eyes look fine. If we want to do any brightening or anything like that, you do that just by resetting create a new exposure brush and you do brightening but with this light coming straight into our eyes it's already really bright and it's already very very you know bold so if we do anything else to it right now we're going to just basically kind of crush it and, and make it look a little bit too fake so that looks fine right there the one thing i do want to do now is is enhance my detail so we're going to add another brush we're going to make this our detail brush and by all means, guys, feel free to save these adjustments as, as different brushes. I do that, but the reason why I recreate this is because for every single tutorial, I don't know what brushes you guys have, so we just create these from scratch. But when I'm editing on my own, I have all these brushes created already. So this is my detail brush, and what I'm going to do is go in and paint detail over like the hair. So we're going to do it over a thin strip uh, just to see where the effect is. Uh, I'm going to hit O just to make sure that it actually covered it. Yeah, And we're going to just kind of get the effect where I want it and then we're going to paint it over all of the hair. So I'm just going to bring it over the hair, and this just serves to kind of amplify this kind of gorgeous, uh, you know, black hair that she has. And it just really brings out the detail. So I'm going to hit O again just to bring up my overlay. We're going to make sure that we're not adding it over the skin areas. If we do, we'll retouch it out. So let's just kind of clean this up now. It doesn't need to be perfect over these strands in the back because it's not going to be doing anything really if it's over the black area. I want to make sure it, it is going to increase noise a tiny bit, so I want to make sure it's not like super noticeable. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit, but we don't need to do it too much. All right, I'm going to just adjust the skin and I'm going to zoom in and we're going to just get this a little bit closer to the edge on the skin right here. All right. Let's just retouch it a little bit out of the back. That's looking great. If he had a really cool shirt on um, that I wanted to amplify the detail on, I could do that as well. This isn't a shirt that uh, you know I feel like would look that great if it was amplified, so I'm going to leave it out. But really, any cool detail in a shot, I'm always just trying to like bring out. You know, whether it's architectural, whether it's you know hair, whatever it is, I want to really amplify that. Let's click on our our uh, brush again just to reveal the hair. If we want to add another layer of, of sharpening, we can do that. Or not sharpening, but detail adjustments, we can do that. But we can see what that did just by clicking off right here. It just adds a nice little bit of boost to that hair detail. All right, guys, so this is great. We've gone through the basic retouch. Stuff like this strand here, we need to go into Photoshop. Any other kind of larger items, we need to take them into Photoshop. But we've done a good job of just taking our image, doing basic retouch on it. I'm going to save out this snapshot as the retouched color corrected. And let's check out the before and after. So here's the basic uh, color corrected version, and here is our retouched version. One thing that I like to do in Photoshop as well is uh, these highlights on the skin, I like to basically reduce those with a clone tool. So that's one thing that you would need to go into Photoshop to adjust because it's going to be really difficult to do it in, uh, in Lightroom. There is a way to do it in Lightroom, guys, just to show you guys. And basically, you're just going to do another brush. You're going to hit reset. And then you're just going to reduce clarity over those areas. And it has an effect to kind of dull out. Oops, let me hit O so we can actually see it. It kind of dulls out these highlights a little bit. Um, so if I undo that, you can actually see how it, it kind of just serves to dull it. But 
I'm not going to worry about it here. Um, you guys can do it if you guys want to. That's something that I typically would do in Photoshop just because it'll give us a cleaner effect overall. All right, guys, I think this looks great the way it is. I am noticing two little spots over here. This looks like a little bit of lens dust. So I'll uh, just clone this out real quick. You guys can choose whether or not you want to do this. But I don't want any haters getting online and being like, why are there dust spots on the image? So we'll just fix that real quick. So that looks fine, not noticeable, great. All right, guys, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.